Hello everybody, Trenno here, and today we are looking at the release version of the Air Superiority update. And so we're going to take a look at the various tanks and other armoured vehicles that were added in the update. And we're going to start off with a new addition that wasn't on the dev server, and that is the Hungarian Tigris. And this is coming into the Italian tech tree at battle rating 6.0 rank 4. Now Hungary did use Tiger tanks during the war, they had about 10 transferred to them from a unit that was converting to King Tiger tanks, and so this is a historical vehicle, it was used by the Hungarians, they also used Panther tanks, and so maybe we'll see that added in the future as well, and this makes more sense than the Japanese premium, because Japan never actually got its Tiger tank, and this seems to be a bit of a mismatch between the H1 and E in stats, so it's got the roof armor of the E, but it seems to have the slower turret traverse of the H variant, so it only does about 8.3 degrees a second. It doesn't come with any smoke grenades or APCR round, unfortunately, but it does have some additional armor at the front here in the form of these tracks. I believe once you take the multipliers into effect, this is about 22 millimeters extra armor. So about a 20% increase compared to what its armor already is. And this track here is not attached to the armor itself. So that's kind of spaced armor in a way. And you've also got these tracks here to provide additional protection. And so this is a very welcome addition to the Italian tech tree. Kind of a shame it wasn't added as a regular vehicle, but I'm still hoping the TARS could be added at some point in the future. And like I say, we've still got the option of the Panther tanks being added, but I think they would probably be added as premiums as well, to be honest. And then going back to America, we're going from left to right. America got the M1A2 SEP V2. And to be honest, this isn't really all that different from the other SEP. I mean, when the dev block came out and it was touting how this had a remote weapon station, which, you know, is how all roof-mounted machine guns work. Uh, you know, you could probably tell they were kind of stretching a little bit. I know there has been a flurry of bug reports with regards to the depleted uranium armour. Um, we'll have to see what Gaijin does with that, but I'm not holding my breath, unfortunately. So basically, the only major change between this and the previous variants is the extra weight and this ERA armour on the side, which helps against heat FS shells. So if you fire a heat FS shell, it won't be able to go through. But if you fire at it with an ATGM with a tandem warhead, that will still go straight through. And while many other tanks in this update have got a spool liner, unfortunately the Abrams tanks aren't one of them, which again doesn't seem to make all that much sense because I'm pretty sure Abram tanks do have some form of spool liner. But again, we'll have to see if that might change in the future. And then of course the other... American edition was the M1A1 clickbait, which is basically an M1A1 HC with a few very, very minor modifications, so various bits strapped to the side of it. Unique decals on the turret itself. Uh, you've got this chair at the top here, but I don't think all these things attached to the side are going to make all that much difference, to be honest. So, you know, this is a nice premium if you're looking to research the new Tier 8 vehicles, but for the most part, it's just an M1A1HC, so if you're looking for something very unique, uh, you're not going to find it here, I don't think. Then moving on to Germany, at 11.7, .7, we've got the Leopard 2 A7V, and this does have a spool liner now, so this is more well protected against shots that actually penetrate the vehicle. And of course, I did tout that it had this new Lent 55 A1 gun. The Leopard 2 A6 also has this gun, it's just not called the A1, so it kind of threw me off a little bit. And so while the extra penetration is welcome, it's not exactly going to be a massive game changer like I thought it would. It doesn't have the composite screens around the sides here and especially around this weak spot. So, you know, that's going to be a bit of a minor weakness in uh, battle. And also interestingly, since my last video, Gaijin seems to have nerfed this area of the hull. So the equivalent protection here is now about 630 odd millimeters. However, if we go over to the Stritzwagen 122B plus and aim at the same area with the same gun, it's now about 700 to 720 millimeters protection. And so where this area is a vulnerability on the 2A7V against the Swedish vehicle, it is an invulnerable area. I'm not entirely sure why this is the case. I mean, they use the same hull. You would have thought they'd have the same protection. I'm not entirely sure why Gaijin has decided to do it that way. I mean, maybe they'll change it again in the future, but I'm pretty sure this has been nerfed since the dev server. So... It seems like this was a deliberate change, so we'll just have to see what happens with that in the future. Then moving on, we come to the Russian top-tier vehicle, the T-90M. 
And again, that has spool liner, but again, that's not such a big deal now. Well, it's still a big deal, but it's not as a big a deal when as when it was the only tank with it. You've got various ERA blocks and uh, slat armor around the sides and rear of the tank. And of course, it is extremely well protected from the front. So with the German top tier APFS DS round, you're probably going to have a lot of trouble penetrating this uh, upper hole front plate. Again, it says penetration possibility is low, but it also says it's nowhere near penetrating 640 versus about 700 plus. So this is going to be very well protected from the front. So this is definitely a tank you're going to want to flank if you want to easily destroy it. And then moving on to Britain, we have the Challenger 3 Technology Demonstrator. Uh, it was called Prototype in the dev server, but this is a more accurate name because the Challenger 3 is not going to look anything like this. I think this was just a test bed for the 120mm length 55 gun. And to be honest, this is probably one of the additions I'm most looking forward to actually using because this is a massive game changer for British tanks. So its top tier APFS DS round does 640mm penetration now. The Challenger 2E only did about 557mm with its top tier APFS DS round, so a little short of 100mm extra penetration. I mean, you do lose access to the heat shell, but how useful that was actually going to be I in the top tiers, I'm not entirely sure. I know some of the armor was slightly reduced a little bit, but this was never particularly the most well protected tank in the world anyway. Although now the turret cheeks look to be a lot more vulnerable than they previously were. But again, like with the German Leopard tanks, it does come with a spool liner, but it only seems to be fitted mostly around the front hole. So if I can find it. Yeah, so there's the spool liner at the front. You have got some RHA around the sides. I can't remember if that was there on the dev server. And that's 20 to 50 millimeters. So not the worst in the world, but whether it will actually, you know, help at catching spooling, I'm not entirely sure. To see how the spooling looks like when firing through the front there. Yeah, so it seems to catch a fair bit of spooling. So hopefully this will help provide additional survivability for this tank. And of course, the other major British change was the Challenger 2 OES. So that's for sale for 9,620 Golden Eagles. Basically the same as the Tez, except you have a 50 cal machine gun on the roof here instead of the 7.62 millimeter machine gun. And you've got some structural steel over these external armor blocks. And this isn't even 20 millimeters. I think it's more like 9 to 10 millimeters extra protection. So this is basically nothing. So again, it's a another premium tank like with the M1A1 HC clickbait, which is, you know, not exactly going to be a massive change compared to the vehicle it's based off of. Useful if you're wanting to research the top tiers of Britain, but if you're looking for a unique tank, this isn't going to give you anything like that, unfortunately. And then Japan at rank 5, battle rating 7.0, got the Type 99. And this is basically a Japanese self-propelled howitzer, but it fires its shells at a much higher velocity, 940 meters a second instead of about 680 odd for the American M109. And it comes with this additional shell, which has a little bit more penetration, so 64 millimeters versus 61 millimeters and comes with about five kilograms extra TNT equivalent explosives. So yeah, this will be a very welcome addition to the Japanese tech tree. And you've got this machine gun on the roof here for anti-air work as well. And yeah, it's nice to see Japan getting a very useful self-propelled howitzer vehicle. Then moving on to the Chinese, you've got the VT4A1 at 11.7. And there's been some changes to this. So the composite armor has been changed from five millimeters to uh, what you can see on screen here. Not the most well protected composite armor plate. Um, if you go to protection analysis and shoot it with the Leopard 2A7V's top tier APFS DS round, it will go straight through steel. So definitely not the most well protected tank in the world. And even the turret cheeks are a little bit vulnerable, to be honest. And the gun reload rate is now the same as the previous tank. I think it was a little bit slower before, but the targeting speed for the horizontal and vertical is still a little bit slower. And this ERA armor has been fixed as well. It's now actually attached to the armor proper, which is now RHA instead of structural steel. But again, only 20 millimeters, so still not particularly great. Once that ERA is gone, you're, uh, it's not going to be much armor for you to punch through to get straight into the turret. Although you may hit this composite armor behind here as well, depending on the angle. And other than that, you've got some slat armor around the turret. And of course, you do have the APS systems. So you've got four of them around the tank. Well, you've got four of these ones around the tank and these two on the top here. So we'll have to see how useful that APS system is for the tank when it's used in battle. Then moving on to France, you've just got the ACMAT TPK 6.41 VPC between the AMX-13 and the AMX-10P, which... 
kind of fills a gap, although it's the same battle rating as the AMX 10P, so also kind of doesn't. Would have been preferred to see the gap at tier two between the CCKW and the AMX 13 field, but this would still be a useful vehicle. And it is basically just a track with a 20mm Orlikan cannon, so nothing groundbreaking, unfortunately. Although it's at 5.3, so that's a fairly low battle rating, I think. And it is also pretty fast, so top speed of 56 miles per hour, so quickly able to get around the battlefield. And with your large crew of six, you might be able to survive reasonably well if an enemy doesn't know where to target properly, or if you're just taking some lucky shots. So um, yeah, definitely a welcome addition to the French tech tree, but not exactly a game changer by any stretch of the imagination. Then Sweden got the STRV 122B Plus at the end of its Leopard line, and this has the shorter 120mm gun, so not quite as powerful as on the German variant. And again, this is what the armour looks like from the front. Reasonably well protected, but still fairly vulnerable to the top tier APFS DS rounds. And this also comes with spool liner, so if we look inside... Yeah, so you've got some spool liner on the side here. And as I sort of forgot to mention in my previous video, it does also come with these composite screens, which do help to cover up some weak spots, especially around the back of the turret. So this area is now a bit more protected, but it's only really useful against heat FS rounds. It has a 0.16 multiplier against kinetic rounds, so 100 millimeters only actually provides about 16 millimeters of protection against uh, kinetic rounds. So again, while this is a welcome addition, these composite screens aren't going to be a massive game changer, unfortunately. But the spool liner is also going to make this tank a lot more well protected. And then lastly, we've got the Israeli Rechev and Giraffe. So the Rechev is basically a long barreled M109. Um, of course, the previous Israeli version was a short barreled variant. And it's got a 7.62mm machine gun on the turret roof and a 50 cal on the barrel itself. So a little bit worse against enemy aircraft, but more protected against lightly armoured ground vehicles. And so again, a welcome addition at 6.3, because this helps to bridge the gap between the M109 and the Saklam Tega. And then lastly, we've got the Giraffe, which is an M113A1 with a tow anti-tank guided missile launcher. So lightly protected, though decently speedy with a top speed of 40 miles per hour. This will be a very decent addition to the Israeli tech tree, and I hope this means that we'll start seeing more anti-tank guided missile vehicles added to the Israeli tech tree at the higher tiers. And so that is all of the various tanks that have been added in the air superiority update. And to be honest, none of them are a particularly massive standout to me. I mean, the T-90M is pretty well protected. Uh, the Leopard A27V has decent enough armour, but none of these are exactly a paradigm change. I'd say the Challenger 3 is a bit of a paradigm change because it does add a massively more powerful gun to the British tech tree. But none of these are a particular standout. And to be honest, I'm more enthralled by the uh, Hungarian, Israeli and Japanese additions to the game. Like, I mean, the top tier has never been my favourite sort of area for vehicles anyway. And to be honest, I'm not really sure where Gaijin can go from here because the Americans can get the SEP V3 and SEP V4. I'm not really sure what the Germans can get for the Leopards. The Russians can get some various modifications that have been introduced in recent years. But again... Getting information on these new vehicles is going to be a massive problem. Like we're already running into problems with the depleted uranium for the American tanks and spool liners, and there's uh, murmurings that the German Leopards have possibly got the wrong composite armor. I I just hope they maybe move away from the uh, more modern stuff and maybe go back to focusing on the earlier vehicles for which we actually have information on. I mean, like I say, we, there's not really anywhere else we can go unless we're going to start adding vehicles that have just not been introduced or, or in prototype testing. I mean, like I say, the Americans have got the SEP V3 and V4, which could be added. Although the V4's been cancelled, you could still add it as a prototype. But again, like I say, we're not going to have much information on these various tanks. So yeah, I'm hoping we'll maybe see a bit of a step back and focus in on the lower tier vehicles in the future. Anyway, just a quick video for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully you'll join me for the next one. I've been Toreno and I'll see you next time.